Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 46 today for the Portuguese Grand Prix in Season 3. If you guys did miss the previous episode at Monaco, then absolutely please go check that one out because that perhaps is going to go on to be and is very much at this point the craziest race we have had on this game Period. Absolutely. We had 11 DNFs, three safety cars, somehow not a red flag in there as well. To be honest, the first incident definitely probably should have been a red flag. And then uh, an incredible ending where we went from dry to wet, the leaders crashing into walls hobbling along trying to get to the finish line including our teammate who was one of them who managed to actually come out of that without a DNF but the leader crashed out we were coming through and it even involved Nico Alkenberg getting a podium that is how you know it was mental because Nico Hulkenberg finally broke that duck and he got onto a podium in Formula One. But yeah, what a mad, mad episode that was. That was like a, that was a, a classic under the floodlight sort of uh, episode of my team career mode. There's always one of them on every game. And I think that one was maybe our one for F1 23, but... Yeah, so after that, I've recovered from that race, and we move on then to another exciting one, because last season, the debut here of Portimao into the calendar was a really great one. Portimao, with the handling model in this year's game, is so nice to drive once again, compared to F122, where it was an absolute dud, and it was like one of the worst circuits to drive. But um, in terms of the context of the championship, not getting ahead of, ahead of myself, we're into second place, but it doesn't mean anything, because that was a mental race, at Monaco we brought home a 1-2 and the car very much does not have the pace to be doing that or in a normal circumstance so I'm kind of just getting my feet on the ground and preparing for going back to a difficult race maybe here at Portimao and it's going to be more difficult because we had a development failed I can't believe it this upgrade the ultimate engine power upgrade it's failed we don't have it on the car so we have to we have to respend a thousand R&D points that's a thousand points that could have gone towards our 2026 engine build. We've now to repurchase that, and that's going to delay the ERS upgrade even further. So, yeah, I I'm going to bite the bullet and go ahead and spend some cash on the fabrication for the powertrain HQ facility. That will allow us to actually do both the upgrades at the same time. It's maybe a little bit too late for that, a little too late, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to actually take advantage of it, but it is what it is. But in terms of every other department, you can see we're still in the top four for aero, top three for chassis so yeah the rest of the car is fine it's really just a waiting game to get the engine power uh, the extra engine power the extra ers upgrades the fuel i'm not too worried about i think we can probably do without those fuel upgrades uh, and it may look like we're worse off on the engine chart when in reality in terms of pure power like pure just brunt and actual ers capability we're going to be there once those two final ultimate upgrades come in so I think we're, 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 we're just waiting a little bit longer. The timing of it may be actually quite nicely. The home GP, the British Grand Prix, may be the first time we, we feel fully comfortable and right up there with everyone, with McLaren, with Red Bull, with Merck, with Ferrari, because you can see there is that deficit we've got. Although, really, it's not massive. You know, the scaling of this chart is, uh, is very zoomed in. So in reality, you know, you know, even though Monaco was mental, we still had to be there to pick up the pieces um, you know, in order to get that win, basically. And Gasly, of course, didn't even pit for the intermediates, and he still picked up the second place uh, despite crashing. So, you know, when our teammate's doing that well still, it kind of shows actually maybe the car's better than we think you know I think we're having a bit of a maybe like a Fernando Alonso 2012 sort of season where the car started off you know we, we think it's a bit of a dud and in reality if you really look at the results look at the consistency maybe we're okay it's just overshadowed right now unlike in 2012 by a dominant team and dominant driver Piastri is doing, is doing a fantastic job and Bottas I mean he's there I mean he just needs to kind of iron out these mistakes and it could be a very different season because 
McLaren are still very, very quick. And really, they need to be making the most of their car right now before some of us start to catch up. I mean, we've already seen Red Bull catch up a little bit when they've slipped up as we now go into a wet and wild Q1. You can clearly see it's very wet out here. Not quite full wet conditions at the moment because I've actually waited till the end of Q1. We started on full wet. I didn't even bother to go out on those tyres. Instead, we've just waited for the intermediate. And there's a lot of traffic getting out of our way, thankfully. Two cars already we've had to overtake on this first flying lap. I think we're going to have to go for a second one, to be honest, in terms of just uh, rubbering in and zoning in. And definitely now as what the hell was that? Kevin Magnussen, what are you doing? Oh my god, he's blocked his twice. What what's going on? What's going on? I took that break when I went on holiday and I've come back and the AI are just like block galore in qualifying. Outstanding stuff. That was actually somehow worse than the one Bottas did to us in the Spanish GP episode. So we do go again. We've actually gone red, ironically, in the first sector. Um, without any cars in front of us. But you can see here in the second sector, you're going to see that top right uh, delta time just fly up at this very moment uh, up to a well over a second and a half gained here. And we're going to need it because... Um we're down to P8 now. That, that That's going down and down as we go on through as the checkered flag has fallen for Q1. And we're just looking to comfortably get through into Q2. Uh, you know, wet conditions, always a worry. You can get caught out on the game, especially as a player versus the AI. You know, you just never know what's going to happen at the end. So you have to be there at the end, crossing the finish line at the right time. As we're going to go 1.9 seconds quicker to elevate ourselves from P15 to P6. So that lap time was actually needed. P15 right on the cusp of maybe being knocked out. Gasly gets through in P3. Bottas, after a shamble ending to the Monaco GP, is top of the session. Max Verstappen, though. What on earth's gone on on there? Him and Red Bull decided not to go out on intermediates, and he's been knocked out. He's stone dead last, legitimately, without any penalties for the Portuguese Grand Prix. Absolute howler, and that's not what he or Red Bull needed after, obviously, a double DNF at the Monaco GP with Lando locking up and going out uh, at Casino Square. And obviously, Max had that lap one collision with uh, with his best mate, Espen Ocon, I think it was. So, uh, yeah, not great for Ma Max Verstappen. At least Lando Norris is up there as we now go into Q2. This is our second consecutive lap in Q2. Is the Portimao. The lowest fuel setting you can do is 3.2. I find that's actually too much fuel still. So you have to do two laps to get the maximum out of the car. And let me tell you, that lap I just did, that second one, unreal. I was in flow state. I was the most focused I've ever been on a qualifying lap. That was probably the most satisfying lap I've ever done on this game. And because of it, we go top by a tenth over a McLaren, which just shows how much, uh, you know, how good that was. But it's a really surprising one for both Aston Martins are out. Russell's out. Schumacher's the Mercedes that's gone uh, come up. So for the first time, Schumacher is the leading Mercedes driver and both Ferraris are out. So some real big hitters then out of Q2 and some surprising people involved in Q3. Sergio Perez in the Sauber, Liam Lawson in the Alpha Tauri, Schumacher in the Mercedes, Ocon in the Alpine. Four people that I did not expect to be up here, you know, in terms of usual suspects. So this is going to be interesting. But this second flying lap for us has not been amazing. Our first one was horrid. I really didn't feel comfy with the car. And the track conditions have changed from Q2 to Q3. The track feeling a little bit more slippery. The rear end wasn't planted as much as I, I as it was in Q2, I felt. And we've had this before in F123. And that's our lap. Only P7. I've not got enough time to come back in and go back out. Lando Norris ended up not even um, you know, finishing the session. He set one time good enough for P5 and then had this crash uh, whilst a few of us were trying to come in for an in-lap. So... Yeah, a bit of a topsy-turvy qualifying in the end. And a pretty poor one, disappointing one for us to be down in P8. Although, if you look at the lap times, if I did my Q2 lap, which was the unreal lap that I felt was amazing, that would have only still been good enough for P5 in this session. So the AI have outdone me here. They've really, you know, found some extra time in the top 10 shootout. And it's ominous. It's a front row lockout for McLaren. Bottas, though, is the one on pole position in a race he needs to bounce back from that Monaco disappointment. Piastri 
Century P2. Gasly on the second row. Very nice. Uh, uh, you know, alongside Mick Schumacher, which is surprising. So, yeah, it's a bit of a weird top 10, to be fair. So, hopefully, we could have a bit of a weird result and uh, it won't be utter McLaren devastation, uh, you know, for, for the rest of us, at least. So, let's go to the grid and find out. Welcome along then to Portimao, one of the busiest towns in the Algarve and a breathtaking destination that brings tourists from all around the world to the shores of southern Portugal. Today it's the backdrop for the latest round of the Formula One World Championship and with a circuit this wide, we could be in for a lot of exciting wheel-to-wheel -wheel action today. 2.9 miles of track at Portimao feature 15 turns, nine to the right and six to the left. A lot going on at this track, a lot of elevation changes that'll affect the driver's braking and acceleration. Keep an eye out for the DRS zone on the final straight. That'll be the setup for a lot of today's overtaking opportunities. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position, and it's Pierre Gasly in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Mick Schumacher, Norris, Ocon, Perez, Oscar Piastri, the owner driver, Liam Lawson, Magnussen, Sainz, Russell, Fernando Alonso, Albon, Ricardo, Leclerc, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Sargent, Theo Porcher, Stroll, and Max Verstappen completes the grid. Now it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Alongside me to discuss all the action today is Natalie Pinker. Thanks for joining us, Natalie. And tell me, you were down in the pit lane earlier. How do you think the track conditions are today? Well, the surface looks clean enough, but I'm a little bit worried about the track temperature. It's pretty cool out there, which could give some teams difficulties when it comes to keeping their tyres in the right operating window. The cars out there that work their tyres hard and really put a lot of energy through them, well, they'll be the ones that are better off. So, once again, signs that McLaren are human in this season. Piastri has a penalty and he's down to P7 from P2. Um, so, it must be like a, a minor component change, maybe the gearbox, because um, I don't think he picked up a penalty anywhere else in the session yesterday. And that elevates our teammate, Gasly, once again, for the second time, uh, is on the front row. Uh, in this season. He's alongside Valtteri Bottas. Of course, uh, he was alongside one of them at Singapore as well. So can he maybe get a good start and get into P1 potentially? That would be unreal and would really put us to shame down here in P8. We've got some making up to do. We've got uh, uh, Perez in the Sauber ahead of us. Ocon as well. Yeah, uh, we definitely got to pick up some of these positions that we're, we're off quicker than those guys at least. And then we'll see where we go from there as we go to five red lights to the Portuguese Grand Prix lights out and away we go and it's a shocking one for the row ahead of us Ocon and Perez don't get off the line Bottas has gone from P1 down to P4 the Finn has had a nightmare getaway Pierre Gasly our teammate is leading this Grand Prix and Liam Lawson has managed to get ahead of us in the Alpha Tauri just like in real life Lawson doing absolute wonders in the Alpha Tauri uh, so it's Gasly from Schumacher in the Mercedes, Bottas down to third, Norris P4, and then behind me is Russell, Ocon, Alonso, Perez, Piastri is down to P11. Both McLarens had a nightmare start, probably even worse for Piastri. He's outside the top 10 now. The championship leader has got work to do then in this race as we're getting to work on Liam Lawson into turn one, lap two, giving him the room on the inside, but ultimately we do have the quicker car to get up into P5 as we watch the battle for first place. Schumacher chasing after Gasly and Schumacher having a bit of a breakout race this is in his return to Formula 1 for Mercedes. He leads the GP and his teammate is going to follow him through and make an identical overtake on yours truly. Both Mercs overtake both of us. Incredible. Literally copycat moves going on here. And is this, is this Mercedes time to shine? Schumacher into the lead of the Portuguese Grand Prix. Russell's overtaking us. I, I, I'm I'm hoping Russell can pull us along with a bit of DRS because I didn't fight that as much as I could have because I know it seems like he's a bit quicker. I think these Mercs are looking good and clearly it is the case with Schumacher now in first place as Piastri makes one position up into P10, back into the points 
for the Australian as his teammate Bottas overtakes Gasly. Is this maybe the start of the end for our car in terms of the race base? Gasly is now down to third and the Flying Finn is on his way maybe to maybe get that inevitable P1 actually back from Schumacher. It was nice while it, while it lasted, just like in real life. You know, it's nice while it lasts, other people being in first place, but eventually one of the McLarens will get into first. It, it really is like our version of the Red Bull domination so far here in Season 2. Although, as of late, we've had a bit of topsy-turvy nature, so let's see. But Piastri climbing places to P8 then. And look at this. Both Alpines ahead of the Ferrari. Ferrari having a mare. They're busy fighting an Alpha Tauri and a Sauber. Where have Ferrari gone? Yeah, they're having a shambles of a season. I thought this was going to be their year. Uh, funny enough, but no, they're, they're having a mare. They're having a 2020 style season here as they're not even in the points and they're fighting some solid midfield contenders as uh, Schumacher continues to lead, but Bottas getting ever closer and we're getting ever closer to going for the repass on Russell because look at this, we both caught up to Gasly. So yeah, Gasly's race pace fell away. We've now overtaken Russell with a, a little bit of a, a wobbly moment on the curb, but we made it work. And now we're going to get straight on to overtaking Gasly. A bit of a fake to the right, go to the left, keep him guessing, and we're up into P4. As much as Gasly looked really quick at the start of the race, he, he's definitely not like this soft tyre in terms of the tyre way. He's fallen away, and now we're looking much better in P4. As there goes Bottas, it was inevitable, I feel. The McLaren is just a much quicker car at the moment in this season. Schumacher doing well though to still be in a frame for maybe his first ever podium in Formula 1 of course. Lando Norris in third place. The Red Bull lurking around and a bit of a quiet one Red Bull have. You know Norris we've not seen too much of him in this first part of the race so let's see if he can now have a go at Schumacher and then maybe have a, have a chance of trying to chase after and pressurise Valtteri Bottas. Meanwhile the Ferraris are uh, gaining back into the points and speaking of the other Red Bull Verstappen started last. He's now P15 so he's only gained seven positions in uh, what was that like 12 laps so slow progress for Max Verstappen as we now come into the pits on lap 13 one lap earlier then our planned pit stop because I'm actually switching the strategy uh, the suggested strategy was soft to mediums and uh, well no absolutely not I'm not I don't want to, I don't want the medium tires so we're going on to the hards oh it's a late it's a late late pit stop though uh, that was um not my finest moment. I'll let you into a secret. What happened there was uh, I mistakenly clicked the wrong button. Uh, just fully. I literally clicked the button above the button I was meant to click. Uh, cause I, so I was going to time it right, but we timed it wrong just because of that misclick. So it's a late pit stop for us. Onto the hards, though. We love the hard tyres on this game. And hopefully we can put them to good use as we catch up to Hulkenberg. How the mighty have fallen. Myself and Hulkenberg fighting for P19 and 20 at the moment. We were in first and third at the end of Monaco. But of course, we made a pit stop. He's not. So he's really fallen away. And I'm sure, I think Hulkenberg will be living off that podium the entire season. Sauber will probably live off that entire podium this entire season. You know, a crucial crucial podium though for them to get some good points some good cash in the championship before they become Audi of course next season as we're now catching up to Teo Porcher who's done well on this lap to be fair to still be ahead of us as these hard tyres are still warming up a little bit I feel and Russell's come out right underneath us on the mediums I've not used too much battery and Russell uses plenty it would seem to get to the inside of that final corner very unorthodox place to make a pass like that on the inside but we're going to try and really overtaking meanwhile Gasly uh, in the pits now and if we look behind me he may just get jumped by Piastri as we defend hard and stay ahead of Russell yep look behind us Piastri now is ahead of Gasly so that's how much time he lost going on for two more laps then Oscar Piastri up into P6 recovering well in the McLaren as Russell's having another go at us we're going to squeeze him to the inside down the crest into the hairpin go for the tight switch back move on our fellow Compatria, and we're going to get back up into P4, but this is turning into a scrap and a half with George Russell. We had a, a few swapsies in, in stint one, but now this is a proper fight, hard versus mediums, so he may have a slight advantage, but obviously we know this car prefers the hard tyres, so we've just had to go for it as we're now still jockeying for position, giving him the space to work with the inside, but still trying to squeeze him out if we can, but Russell adamant to get to the inside for that right-hander. We're adamant about trying to get the elbow out. 
up the hill, but he's still there. He's still there on the right. And even with battery deployment, the Mercedes is getting ahead of us because that medium tire is giving him that extra little bit of oomph on the acceleration. And you can see it plain as day right there as he cuts across us and he's going to block us. He's almost basically trying to back us up into our own teammate. Russell has come out swinging today in the Mercedes and it means all of us are losing a lot of time to the podium to be honest so I don't think any of us are getting onto the podium today there's eight seconds to Lando Norris now as we continue to squabble with Russell going for the cheeky dive bomb it's going to be close oh we graze tire side walls on the left hand side we even get a little warning for collision ah that was nothing FIA just a little bit of tire grazing and here comes Pig Gasly though on the inside where the where on earth has he come from Gasly the acceleration of dreams it's three wide going up the hill we have to back out of this we have to back out of this three does not go into one at that corner but Gasly is going to hold his position and go round the outside and get P4 and we're going to actually follow him through and follow the leader a little bit there as Russell's getting a little bit wayward with his rear end he tries to go round the outside absolutely no chance through there and we're going to maintain the P5 but four laps later Gasly has now pulled away by 2.3 seconds. So even though I feel like these hard tyres are better for us, there's no performance in them. Gasly's pulling away in the same car on the mediums, and now Russell and Piastri are fighting behind us, both with DRS. Piastri going for the large lunge, and he hits us. He hits us to go and make the double overtake. I thought he was just going to go for the move on Russell, and I could take the apex like normal, but Piastri's gone for the double overtake, and the championship leader getting a little bit cheeky there with the elbow out. I feel that was a bit harsh because uh, I don't I think he was just fighting Russell and he kind of just kind of lucked into overtaking me with a bit of contact he made but I'm thinking now should we have gone on the mediums? Because uh, Gasly's showing some great pace out there as Ricardo and Verstappen crash. The Alpine is out of this Grand Prix and there's a virtual safety car. You know what? This might just save me. I, I just talked about, should we have gone on to mediums? I'm not thinking about it now, uh, mediums, but I am thinking about the soft compound. We've got a virtual safety car. We could get a free pit stop here, or basically a free pit stop. So we're going to come in uh, and go onto the soft compound attire. This is a risk, I know, and the virtual safety car is ending. No, no, no. It's not, it's not gone on for long enough to, to gain the advantage. Ah, we've gone green. We've gone green. We've lost about maybe, I would say this is a good 10 seconds of virtual safety car advantage. Just like Piastri, remember, in Japan in the real race just gone. Oh, and there's an issue. There's, ah, oh, there's an issue on the pit stop. Okay, um, maybe that was the worst decision I've ever made. Uh, we, we not only didn't get a full advantage of the virtual safety car, we also just lost more time with the pit stop mistake. Great. Okay, calm. So we've got 10 laps. 10 laps. We are basically last, near enough. We're on a brand new set of soft tyres. Ten laps to go. P20. Where can we go from here? It's all down to us. And we'll see how the tyre wear is for everyone else. As we're going to rapidly close up to Hulkenberg for the second time in this race. We're going to overtake the Sauber, which is pure acceleration. A little bit of battery up to P19. And swiftly move our focus onto Yuki Tsunoda on lap 24. The move on the outside. Late, late lunge on the outside there. But it's like taking candy from a baby right now because these softs are supreme and you know we may be way down the order but right now maybe our decision is actually correct because I feel amazing on these ties it's like a superpower as we go purple first sector whilst overtaking poor chair and Lawson and now onto the back of Lance Stroll's Williams uh, in the middle of lap 24 on the outside the Williams will try and fight it a little bit but it's no use we're up into P15 now and we set our side on Kevin Magnussen in the Alfa Romeo Haas of this season and uh, wow that is some pace we've got through that corner and the speed we've got using a lot of battery I must say but DRS open and we're going to go for another move on Sergio Perez the second salva of the day up into P13 now so we are rattling through these positions now we've got a bit of a gap to Alexander Albon who is actually now in P11 it's Ocon who we're going to overtake but lap 29 we've closed that gap of four to five seconds and we're up into P12 Albon and two further cars just ahead 
points. I can see them up the road on lap 29. But do we have enough laps left in this race to actually get back into where we were as Alonso is pitting? Alonso pit. So that's a second driver in this race now that's made a two-stop, but they've, he's made it really late. So I wonder, as Leclerc is blocking us to no end, but we're eventually going to get past him, I wonder, are drivers thinking about a late second pit stop? Because the tyre wear is maybe a bit high. I mean, that, maybe that's the problem for me, you know, on the on the hards. Maybe the tyres were just wearing out a bit too much, fighting Russell like I did, as we see now on lap 31. Valtteri Bottas leading the way. Lando Norris uh, in second place, 4.5 seconds back then. So he's overtaken Schumacher and got ahead of the Mercedes car. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. And Alpha Tauri, who was lapped, has just taken out the senior Red Bull team. Oh my God. Christian Horner is having an absolute aneurysm right now. Unbelievable. That is some top tier drama in Formula One. The junior team has taken out the senior team and that was for a podium. So Schumacher's into second. Gasly's in third. What? After all of that, where's Russell? Russell's down to P5. Bottas pits! Bottas is in the pits on the second last lap. The leader has pits for a second emergency pit stop. McLaren don't think Bottas can get to the end on those tyres. Schumacher and Mercedes do. We apparently do with Pierre Gasly. Okay, so Gasly's into second. Schumacher, Mick Schumacher leads the race with one and a half laps to go. Bottas still comes out in third third though, which is fair enough. Verstappen has climbed up to P4. He was last place at the start of the race, remember? So an incredible comeback for Max Verstappen. An incredible comeback for us, because we're up to P5. Piastri, Alonso, Russell, Sight, they've all hit. And so many people have made a late second stop. This was the controversial crash between Sonoda and Red Bull. That is, uh, that's poor. That's really poor from, from Sonoda there. He's taken out the senior team. Amazing stuff. So lap 32. We're up into P5, by the way, then. Yeah, because whilst Bottas pit, Piastri also pit. Russell as well. Sainz. You can see Alonso. He was the second driver after me to pit. For the, second, for the second stop in this race. That's why he's gained so much. Because basically, this race was a two-stop, or is a two-stop, clearly. And it's all about actually making, you know, you know, deciding to make that second stop early enough. We did it so early, and we've gained massively here. But Alonso also has, de uh, has gained in this. Oh, my God! <laughs> what? Bottas is out! Oh, my days. Bottas is out and it's raining what is going on in this race this is incredible so mick schumacher has just won his first race in formula one and with mercedes schumacher the schumacher name is back on the top step of the podium gasly comes through for second place on the one stop verstappen is getting a podium from last place because of Bottas's second last lap or last lap DNF engine failure and we've got P4. I tried to get the podium. I tried. We just couldn't manage it. What 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 what, what happened in that race? Everything kicked off in the last 5 laps. Unbelievable, Jeff. That's it for another Grand Prix and a fantastic win for Mercedes. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, what a race. At the end of the day, it is all about raw pace. And our winner had it in spades today. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take the top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. This is going to be a very popular win in the paddock. Mick Schumacher on the top step in Formula One for Mercedes. The last team his father drove for in Formula One. That's a special moment. Gasly. He's finessed another, another result here. How has he ended up in second place? 
He was behind Piastri after the uh, first pit stop because his pace was so poor. And he's ended up pulling off a one stop to get second. Verstappen, last place to third. That's impressive as well. That, that's probably one of the be best drives we've seen from Verstappen on this game. And then for us, of course, you know, we pit early because the hard tyres felt so bad. And then actually we've, we've lucked into being the best out of everyone in terms of a two stop uh, to be ahead of everyone. Alonso jumped some people. Piastri lost out to Alonso. He's still finished in the top five, I think, though, or P6. So still picks up points, still consistent as ever, and he still leads the championship by 25 points. But it's another topsy-turvy race, you know, where McLaren could have and should have had a 1-2 probably. And they've ended up with, well, Bottas had another engine failure. That's why he DNF, by the way, he just had an engine failure on the, on the second last lap. So it's the second time he's had an engine failure this season. So he'll be absolutely kicking the team probably for what's happened to him because he's nowhere near Piastri, where re in reality, this race he should have outscored Piastri, should have got a win. Last race, he can only, only, only blame himself because he crashed out of the race lead at Monaco. You know, Bottas should well be, you know, have like three wins under his belt here. And instead, he's uh, floundering a bit. Um, but I can't believe that race. That was incredible stuff. So, not as chaotic as Monaco, maybe, but still just as entertaining, really. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.